Throughout the lifespan of great literature, whether it be poems, novels, short stories, and in more modern times, comics, you can find interwoven within the themes of their stories how they were inspired and in some cases reflect the times in which they were created. You can see how the writers were influenced by historical events and used them as ways to tell compelling stories which critique their societies during that particular moment in history, almost like a footprint or a document carefully disguised as fiction. So for this video, I'd like to take a closer look at Stan Lee's most popular comic series, The X-Men, and how it manages to reflect America throughout the decades. Three words. Are mutants dangerous? I'm afraid that's an unfair question, Senator Kelly. After all, the wrong person behind the wheel of a car can be dangerous. Well, we do license people to drive. Yes, but not to live. First, let's dive into the main plot. Professor Charles Xavier is a mutant who was born with the superhuman ability of telepathy and mental manipulation. He is the founder of both the X-Men and the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning formerly known as Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters, which he had built to help shelter and train mutants from all around the world. He wanted to show mutants that they didn't have to be ashamed of being who they are. Xavier's main goal is to strive towards a peaceful coexistence and equality between humans and mutants in a world where zealous anti-mutant bigotry is widespread. Xavier's students consider him a visionary and often refer to their mission as Xavier's dream. If this sounds all too familiar, it's because it greatly resembles the times in which this piece of literature originated from. In the 1960s, during an era where there was a real-life civil rights movement, Stan Lee seems to have drawn inspirations from this moment in history, which is ever more prevalent in this comic. Charles Xavier seeks to live harmoniously alongside humanity, just the same as he desires full-fledged civil rights and equality for all mutants. It's why so many comic historians and readers have compared the actions of this character to the all-too-real actions of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a man who had a dream in which black and white people can coexist equally and peacefully, who demonstrated against hate and bigotry with peaceful protest, and instead chose to show love and acceptance for all. The comparisons between the reality of that decade and the X-Men don't just stop there. One of Xavier's closest and longtime friends was Eric Lenscher, also known as Magneto. He is a powerful mutant with the abilities to generate and control magnetic fields. Magneto believes that mutants are an evolutionary superior race to humankind and rejects any possibility of a peaceful coexistence between the two species. When first introduced to the series, Magneto's goal was to conquer the world in order to replace humans as the dominant species. But after many years and different writers fleshing out his origins further, we soon learn that he was a Holocaust survivor. Those life-altering events that he experienced became the driving force that led to his dark and extreme methods and philosophies. He is trying to protect the mutants from oppression and unlawful prosecution from a world that fears them. Those same comic historians and enthusiasts that made the comparisons between Charles Xavier and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr also believe that the character of Magneto analogs a very famous historic figure known as Malcolm X. Malcolm X served as a face for the civil rights movement and advocated for black empowerment, the separation of black and white Americans, and rejected the notion of the civil rights movement for its emphasis on racial integration. King and Malcolm clashed over the best tactics to end racial discrimination and prejudice. Malcolm was highly critical of King's nonviolent approach and called for a more militant strategy that would achieve equality and black liberation by any means necessary. Don't give up on them, Eric. What would you have me do, Charles? I've heard these arguments before. It was a long time ago. Mankind has evolved since then. Yes, into us. We are the future, Charles, not them. They no longer matter. It wasn't until a comic book convention in Hawaii that took place in 2015 where Stan Lee finally spoke about the comparisons between this series and the civil rights movement when he was eventually asked during a Q&A. 
Did you create the X-Men to destroy racial prejudice? Stan's response was, I didn't create the X-Men to destroy racial prejudice, but once I had them going, it occurred to me, man, this script makes a great vehicle to talk about racial prejudice and how terrible it is. At first, I just wanted to get a new superhero group together. Once we had the script going, I said to myself, this would be a great way to show how terrible racial prejudice really is. So I did try to put a little of that theme in. It was the first time Stan ever publicly spoke about how he did, in fact, take inspirations from those real-life historical events and used comics as a way to showcase to his readers of the harsh times back then. And in more current times, writers and directors for the film adaptations use the X-Men to showcase how the LGBT community has been outcast and discriminated by ignorance and bigotry as well. When did you first know you were a... A mutant? A... But you cut that out. You have to understand, we thought Bobby was going to a school for the gifted. Bobby is the gifted. We know that. We just didn't realize he we was... We still a... love you, Bobby. It's just this mutant problem is a little... What mutant problem? Complicated. To me, the X-Men has been a successful portrayal of things going on in our real world, despite it being a fictional comic book depicting mutants and the struggles they face. It's why I wanted to take a closer look and show just how effective something that resembles a picture book with flashy superheroes to those who are quick to dismiss this form of literature, and how it's actually a carefully and masterfully crafted documentation of America throughout the decades. Hey guys, I just wanted to thank you all for watching my video on how the X-Men reflect America throughout the decades. It's a lot of fun making these videos and I couldn't do it without any of you supporting the channel. Uh, if you're new here, hit the like button at the bottom, comment below and tell me what some of your favorite X-Men stories are. And last but not least, share this video with some friends. I hope all of you have a happy and safe Christmas and I'll see you all next year in 2020 with some brand new content here on Tribute This.